personal prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for those with same-sex attraction. Heavenly Father, we stand in awe of your glory and your beauty. You have said that it is not good for man to be alone. We pray for those who suffer with same-sex attraction. Heal the wounds of their past and help them to trust in your perfect plan for men and women. Protect them from those who would lead them into sin and bring into their lives friends who will help them to grow in virtue and true freedom. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Do this in memory of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This morning we welcome our concelebrants. We have Reverend James here, and Reverend James, Father James and Father James. Uh, they are both from uh, the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate in India. And then we have uh, Father uh, Edward uh, Gomez here, who is from Gambia, West Africa, and he's here with the group. And so we welcome you all and thank you for joining us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Please, Please. 
May the venerable intercession of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, and free us from every danger so that we may rejoice in your peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ruth. Naomi had a prominent kinsman named Boaz of the clan of her husband, Elimelech. Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go and glean ears of grain in the field of anyone who will allow me that favor. Naomi said to her, Go, my daughter, and she went. The field she entered to glean after the harvesters happened to be the section belonging to Boaz of the clan of Elimelech. Boaz said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in anyone else's field. You are not to leave here. Stay here with my women servants. Watch to see which field is to be harvested and follow them. I have commanded the young men to do you no harm. When you are thirsty, you may go and drink from the vessels the young men have filled. Casting herself prostrate upon the ground, Ruth said to him, Why should I, a foreigner, be favored with your notice? Boaz answered her, I have had a complete account of what you have done for your mother-in-law after your husband's death. You have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know previously. Boaz took Ruth. When they came together as man and wife, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed is the Lord, who has not failed, to provide you today with an heir. May he become famous in Israel. He will be your comfort and the support of your old age, for his mother is the daughter-in-law who loves you. She is worth more to you than seven sons. Naomi took the child, placed him on her lap, and became his nurse. And the neighbor women gave him his name. At the news that a grandson had been born to Naomi, they called him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Verum Domini. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be in favor. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life.
and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Verbum Domini sports, especially in American sports, athletes are often given nicknames for their excellent performance on the field or for the passion in which they play the game. Now, for example, I'll name a few names here. Uh, Babe Ruth, who was one of the greatest baseball players to ever play the game, was called the King of Swing. He hit a lot of home runs. Another uh, sports figure, Magic Johnson. He was a good uh, basketball player, and he used to throw the ball and shoot the ball in a way that was magical. I mean, he'd make all these very difficult shots and throw these very hard passes, and, and you wonder, wow, how did he do that? Uh, so they called him Magic Johnson. Then there was, uh, there's another one, um, his name was uh, Carl Malone, they used to call him the mailman because he always delivered the ball at the right time in the right places. And then uh, there was a, a good uh, hockey player and I remember I saw him play about uh, oh, over 20 years ago in Los Angeles and I didn't know anything about hockey but by watching him he learned hockey and this is Wayne Gretzky and they called him the great one. See, but these, these sports figures, they, they earned these great nicknames. They lived up to the name. Today, Jesus is speaking to us about the scribes and Pharisees. And he's given us all a warning. He's saying that if, if we're going to have a title, we're going to be called something, have a position of authority, we need to live up to that. 
need to be a good example. It's a warning to us all Christians. We all fall short sometimes. Sometimes we, when our evangelization or service to the Lord, it becomes more about us than about God and giving Him glory and about love of God and love of our neighbor. Well, looking here at the scriptures today, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees, they loved attention, they loved affection, and recognition. You know, in a sense, there's really nothing wrong with that. These are basic human needs. But to desire that all the time, in other words, to, for them to kind of make themselves a god, with, of course, a small g, where people would come to revere them, to almost get, come, come and give them homage for their religion and their, their practice of piety. But yet, these scribes and these Pharisees were not living up to their position. Oh, they loved being called um, rabbi and master and teacher and father but if you're gonna if we're if if these people were are to have the these titles though they they have to live like them and you know remember uh, back in the day when when i was uh, in the seminary and you know, we study all these ologies you know and some of them i never heard of before until until went of the seminary you know Christology, soteriology, eschatology, you know, ecclesiology, all of these ologies, and you know, they, these were great uh, disciplines to learn. But they told us never to to study or to get too immersed in meology. You know, that's the study of ourselves, a sort of a self-glorification always seeking attention in, in our service to God, where it becomes more about me than it becomes about the Lord. And, you know, uh, you know God calls us, of course, to give, to give testimony. That's wonderful. We need to do that. We need to tell people what the Lord has done in our lives, how he's changed us, how he's converted us, the beautiful things. But then... You know, over and over and over again. It's about God. It's about, of course, yeah, it's saying the, the, what he's done for us, but proclaiming the wonder, the love, the beauty of God, the truth of the Lord. That should be our passion, and it should be everything that we're living for, to love God with with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. This should be the fire of our lives. This is doing the will of God. You remember when they asked Jesus, this is Jesus, you know, he was uh, talking to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, and they uh, said, they asked him about some food and things there. Well, you know this, he says, my food is to do the will of God and to accomplish his work. Now that's his drive, that's what he's living for to do the will of God and accomplish his work. That's what we live for. Oh, and then, you know, here in the scriptures down here, you know, people, people are given titles, and Jesus is not saying that we shouldn't have certain titles, but that we remember that God is the source of all good things. He is the ultimate teacher, the master, the true father. And we shouldn't never try to take the place of God, but instead give glory to God and bring people to God, the one we live for, the one who is our all and our everything. And to prevent this, you know, Jesus right here speaks to us, so the greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. That is a path right there. Humility. 
Humility is, is knowing some truth, some truth about ourselves. Yeah, you know, we could be out there serving God and we may want to make a name for ourselves. You know, just raise ourselves up. But, get, but in humility, in true humility, we see ourselves as we are. We see our weaknesses. We see our strengths. But we see that God has given us these strengths. That he's, he, we see who, who we are in Him. You know, and we see what, what we're not. So we're trying to be something, we're, and, and we're re not really that, then we're being a wannabe. But true humility, true humility, we recognize where we're at in the Lord, our weaknesses, again, our strengths. And then that goes well with charity. So we can never go wrong with, with seeking humility, the humility of Jesus Christ. The charity of Jesus Christ. Again, this should be our all and our everything. God has called us as, as us who are his elect, those who are baptized, those who he's, um, he's given his inheritance to live the mysteries of his life. You know, this, this is a big call. We, we, we've all been blessed with this, to walk in the ways of the Lord. And, we, and, and if we're going to proclaim that, we got to first and foremost strive to live it you know to, to live it with of course all our heart soul and strength you know pleasing God in all things this this is our call here and you know what is the the Lord you know we think well hey you know that's that's hard hey father you know it's, it's impossible it's, all things are possible with the Lord we can do all things through through Christ the Lord who strengthens us and only in him who strengthens us and so, my brothers and sisters, you know, God wants us to live it, to try your best, to do your best. You know, that's, that's what he wants to see. And to seek him for strength, for everything. And so, may he be always our all and our everything. May everything we do glorify the Lord. You know, it's great in the, in the end of Mass. It says, uh, go in peace, glorify the Lord with our lives. Or go and announce the gospel of the Lord. God bless you all. Witnessing God's love for the Blessed Virgin Mary fills us with hope. Therefore, with confidence in the Father's love for us, we now ask Him for all our needs. For the Church, that the good seeds nurtured by Christ's love may continue to grow throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. The Lord that the countries of our world may wisely use their resources for the sake of those who suffer. We pray to the Lord. Lord that through the prayers of Mary, the mother of Jesus, we may promote a new appreciation for the dignity of woman, of marriage, and of motherhood. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will bless with his peace those who sleep in death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and Lord, we lift up to you all those who are in the path of uh, Hurricane Harvey. And God, we ask you to protect all people, to keep them safe, Lord, and to give them your peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Father of mercy, you gave us Mary to be a model of humility, docility, and holiness. In her, we find an advocate, a mediatrix, and above all, a mother who always leads us to Jesus. Like her, help us to be humble of heart, docile to your will, and clothed in the garment of holiness. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, these offerings of conciliation and praise, humbly asking that, following the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may present our very selves as a holy sacrifice pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us to her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. So merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope and Robert our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph our spouse, and your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, 
and all your sins. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with the serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, personal Lord, your servants who have gone before you with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Do us also, your servants, who, through sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, and with us we beseech you into their company, not waiving our marriage, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy of this, and I'm not worthy of For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My dear Lord and Savior, 